Hello to my 7th grade classes. So I thought today we would take a quick look at some of the stuff we've been going over because I know this has been very big and this is kind of a tough principle to grapple with. So I thought let's take one chance to look at it with an online video. Uh, in particular we are looking at equivalent relationships which I have to admit I'm very proud with a lot of what I'm seeing. A lot of you are doing so well with that. But I noticed that with the equations, this still feels a little hazy. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take just some time where we can look at it here. You can also use this video where you can stop it, pause it as you need. And if you want to back up and see how we did some of our steps, then you are more than welcome to do that. All right, keep in mind, uh, as I'm making this recording, it's uh, Monday, the 14th of September, which means most of you just learned that we have a notebook check coming up. Hopefully you're all well prepped for that. And of course, if you're on uh, the class that's coming to see me tomorrow, the 15th, uh, you'll get to just barely see that. All right. So we have ourselves here just a nice set of ratios, or just fractions in this case. We haven't really attached units yet. And first thing I'm going to ask is, can you show whether or not these are equivalent? We have a, an equivalent set of ratios here. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can show me that. All right, I'm assuming you paused and kind of went through and said, all right, I can show it to you or whatever. So let's go ahead and look at this. From one to two, that's a growth of going just a multiplication scale up by two. All right, so we do our multiplying step of two. Two to four, we can multiply that by two. And we get to two fourths. So indeed, these are equivalent. And then if we wanted to, we could do the same idea again. Multiply by 2. Multiply here by 2. Right? And of course, we can multiply it a couple of different ways. If we wanted to, we could say 1 times 4 gives us 4. 2 times 4 gives us 8. So that's another step that we can show. We have equivalent uh, ratios. And so if we were to continue this type of trend, we would have what's called a proportional relationship. right? If, if we wanted to, we could make a whole bunch of fractions that are going to be equal to this value here. Another way that you may have seen whether or not these were equivalent is you may have just simply looked at their decimal approximations. 1 over 2, that's going to be 0.5. 2 over 4, that is also 0.5. And 4 divided by 8, that's going to be 0.5 again. That's a handy method if you had your calculator handy. And so if you use that, way to go there too. We can say that these are just all equal to 0.5. All right? So that's another method that we can use. So we've, we've now seen, okay, they're equivalent. And if we were to go all throughout, we'd have ourselves a proportional relationship. And one thing that we can say here, uh, we can just say that now, pick our most uh, simplified fraction. Keep in mind, if, uh, if you were in my class today, we said, all right, if, uh, if it's a fraction, it's going to come out as a decimal. And when we're determining our k value, we want to just call that... Uh, k value, the most simplified fraction. So 1 over 2, it won't break down any further than that. That's our smallest set of numbers for our equivalent uh, set of fra uh, fractions there. And so we have that. All right. Which, uh, k, we always said, all right, given any set of fractions here, k is just equal to y over x, right? In case we needed that as a quick piece of review. All right, so we found our k value. We just said, all right, that's going to be equal to one half. There's a couple other pieces of info that I'm hoping you'll remember. There's a set of notes, and it had three majorly important equations on it. The first one was k equals y over x. The second one is y equals kx. And then our third important uh, piece of information is k is equal to, or pardon me, x is equal to y over k. Right? This one's handy to use, but our most important ones are uh, k equals y over x. We use that one a lot to just say, okay, what's our k value? And then our second one we always go back to is y equals kx, because that one's going to give us a general statement. And the really big takeaway here is just being able to write equations in the form of y equals kx. And notice here we found our k value, right? Once we have our fractions, we just find what's a quotient that'll work for us, what's the most simplified form that we can get to. In this case, we said, all right, k is equal to 1 half. 
So when you hear that term, write an equation, I hope some of you at least said, Y equals KX! Hoping some of you did that. I, I loved uh, working with you and having you guys say that. So Y equals KX. What we're looking at here is we're going to write Y, and we're always going to write X, and then we're going to go back and instead of putting K in for our uh, case with each set of uh, ratios here, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to take, and instead of writing K the letter, we're going to write our K value, the number. In this case, Y equals one half X. And what we've done is we've just kind of created a tool that says, okay, if I am given any X value, I'll automatically know what my Y is. So if we said, all right, Y, uh, let's see, X in this case is equal to 40. In that case, we already know that Y is going to be equal to 20. Or if uh, X is equal to 16, Y is going to be equal to 8, right? Just multiplying each of those inputs by one half and then getting whatever comes back out. All right. So now let's uh, let's go ahead and practice graphing this nice little function. All right. So we have y equals one half x. Since we have it given to us in this format, we can just say, okay, it's a proportional relationship, right? Because again, we're going back to that set of important equations we have. And we can also look at our values here. And remember, every one of these. Ratios is just y over x, right? So we're given three xy pairs, just in a bit of an odd way. All right. Let's see. Now we're going to double check here that everybody remembers their coordinate pairs. Tell you what, though, x x is the one that goes in front. Y is the second one. So we're just going to write this out. And if this feels a little hazy. We're going to talk about this as we as we move on. Okay, but again, x x was two, y is four. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, I'm doing this backwards. I do apologize. That was probably extra confusing there. Sorry, y over x. That means we have the point two one. There we go, and the point four two. All right, and then the point eight four. Again, with x being here, y being there. All right. Would you have taken these just from these points that were up here? And again, we'll see how well we can work with coordinate pairs. We may actually have to spend some time on that, but I believe we've already covered that just in previous grades. If not, we will make sure that we cover that here. But uh, for now, let's also not forget that we had set of ratios, y over x, where we had 1 over 2, 2 over 4, and 4 over 8. Okay, let's keep those in mind as well. All right, so to start things off, we can look at either our fractions here or our coordinate pairs, depending on which ones feel more comfortable. We can say, all right, keep in mind, uh, here's our origin. I would have used uh, the little quadrant one stickers if I could have found them, but unfortunately all I had were these uh, full graph ones. So this is actually where my origin is going to fall. So since uh, so far we haven't really used these other ones, let me just go ahead and cross out the sections that we haven't really used. Okay. So this is mostly what we've been... Uh, writing up on the board in class. And that's the section that we've been using. So, with that, remember the y-axis we go up and down, and then the x-axis we go across. Uh, one good habit to get into for future is to use your x-coordinates first. So, seeing as how we know that our x is going to be 2, we go over 1, 2, then up 1. And then we also know that we go over another 2 to get all, all the way over here to 4 and then we go up 1 that gives us our 2 over 4 and then of course we could hypothetically do that one more time if we realize uh, 3 over 6 
that's another one of the fractions we could have. And then finally, there's our point at 4, 8. So, or pardon me, 8, 4. All right, just double checking, making sure that everything feels good and sound there. And then, uh, I'm just going to flip that over. There's this little card here to get my line nice and straight. All right. It's going to continue on in that direction indefinitely. And so, as you can see here, I've got one more graph. And tell you, let's go ahead and practice this one out a bit, too. And this time, I've just uh, put up two fractions up at the top, one-third and two over six. So first off, I want everybody to look and say, okay, do you think it's proportional? All right. And this time, we're going to try and actually go a little bit backwards. So we're going to write down here our y over x. All right. This is going to be equal to 1 over 3, 2 over 6. And again, y, y over x, because it actually works out really nice for our graph, and then also for our equations that we're writing. So it's just kind of all intertwines. In this case, it just feels kind of arbitrary, but that's how we set them up. All right? And let's actually try graphing them first. So remember, uh, you're probably just drawing these at home. So go ahead and draw yourself a coordinate 1, which is just that little L. And then this is your x-axis. This one's your y-axis. Okay? So the up and down is uh, y, and the right to left, that's your x. Try and plot both of those points and then complete the line. Do it in pencil, though. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, I'll assume you did that. So let's review it. First off, we have x is going to be a positive 3. 1, 2, 3. Then we went up 1. Okay. And then on our second one, we have uh, x is going to be a positive 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And up 2. And there we are. All right, so we have two points. Get my straight line. All right, and we'll assume that keeps going. So I have myself a straight line. It's also going through the origin. So what do we think? These are indeed proportional. They're going to have uh, equivalent fractions. Those are equal to each other, right? So now let's see from the graph. Can we figure out what our k value is? Let's have a look here. So first we can see, all right, we went up by 1. Then we went over by 3. Makes sense. That was our first point that we put down, right? And then we can look at it and say, okay, will that simplify any further? 1 over 3. We run that into our calculator. It's going to give us 0.333. And again, remember, if, uh, if we get these really kind of crazy decimals, it's really kind of better for us to just leave it as the fraction. So in this case, we're just going to leave the fraction. All right, so let's go ahead and set ourselves up here. One-third, that's the most simplified we can get, so that is our k value. We'll look back at our equations for a moment. Remember, this is the one we write a lot. All right, so we are writing something of the form y equals kx, except instead of k, the letter, we're putting in k a number. In this case, see, hopefully you're finishing this sentence for me. All right, give it a shot. What do you think it is? Y equals what? It's Y equals one-third X. Okay? All right. So we'll get to practice a little bit with our graphing. We'll get to look at that a little bit deeper. And hey, anyway, when you come to class, if you've seen this video before class, feel free to let me know. How familiar are you with uh, with coordinate pairs like these here? Because I uh, I haven't seen how much you've used those before, but uh, if we need to spend some time and kind of learn about how to put things up by these points, let me know.
because I'd, uh, I'd really like to know. And this is a very handy skill to have, to know how to kind of read these sets of points. All right. Hopefully you're having a great day. Uh, we just came off of a weekend, so hopefully you all had fun. I know a couple of you, I got to just kind of ask how was your weekend, and you all had fun. Uh, hopefully you're having a good time. Tell you, while you're on YouTube, provided you're not grounded or anything, go ahead and check out, like, maybe your favorite band or something. Go ahead and see if they put up a music video that you just really like. And uh, I'll see you in class very soon.